This is perhaps the greatest miracle Jesus ever performed that is recorded for us in the Gospels outside of his very own resurrection. I think it is the greatest miracle, but let's say it's, it's at least one of them. The raising of his close friend Lazarus from the dead and the absolute joy that it brought to his equally close friends, Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus. This was a family that spent lots of personal time with Jesus. Jesus hung out with this family away from the hustle and bustle of ministry and the people pulling on him and criticizing him. This family home was where Jesus visited frequently. It was a respite for him. He probably had holidays there. He crashed there. He felt comfortable enough with this family that on a moment's notice, he would say, I'm coming over. You remember when he stopped in? with the 12 disciples to to Martha's and Mary's place. It was probably Simon's place. Simon the leper was probably a close relative, if not the father of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And, And he stops into this house on a moment's notice without kind of calling in advance, knocks on the door and says, hey, we all decided to stop over for lunch. Can you fix us something? And you remember the story. Martha is frantically running all around and Mary is at the feet of Jesus. But in order to stop over somebody's house unannounced for lunch, you have to have a close relationship with that person. Your relationship with that person has to be even closer if you have the audacity to come over with 12 of your friends unexpected and expect that person to open up their home and feed everybody without telling them that you're coming or without being invited. So there is a very, very, very special relationship. Jesus loved this family like his own. And he does this amazing miracle for this family. The greatest of all the miracles other than his own resurrection that is recorded in the Gospels. But the question is, and the one, what I want us to look at is, what was the catalyst to the miracle? Or better said, what was the catalyst to this kind of relationship with Jesus that created that kind of miracle? Because how many of you know Those kinds of miracles happen when there is great, solid, steadfast relationship with Jesus. And so I want to know what created the relationship that was the catalyst to the miracle. What was the event that took place? And it lies in one of the scriptures that I skipped over at the very beginning of the story. Verse number 2 of John chapter 11 says, when it describes Mary, it says, it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Lazarus' sister Mary was one and the same with the woman who broke the alabaster box and anointed the feet of Jesus with its contents and then washed his feet with her hair. They're one and the same individual. Now, I need to tell you that there is a lot of debate over the who's and the when's when it concerns the alabaster box anointing. Because in one account, it's in all four Gospels, by the way. It's in Matthew chapter 26, in Mark chapter 14, and Luke chapter 7, and John chapter 12. It's in all four Gospels. But one, a couple of them say it happened in the house of Simon the leper. And a couple of them say it happened in the house of Simon the Pharisee. And so most people have tried to reconcile those two things and and they said that they're two separate events. And they're right, they are two separate events. One anointing with an alabaster box and its contents in the house of Simon the leper. Another anointing in the house of Simon the Pharisee with an alabaster box and its contents. And so the, the when's two separate events. But then they've asked, well, what about the who's? Because in some of the accounts, The who is clearly identified as Mary, the sister of Lazarus. But in the account that we're going to look at in just a few minutes here, the woman who anoints the feet of Jesus with the contents of the alabaster box and wipes his feet with her hair, we're told is a sinful woman. 
And the word sinful woman that is used here is somebody who is chronically immoral and more than likely the town prostitute. And so people have conjectured and said, well, this wasn't only two different anointings at two different times, but it was by two different people. One person being Mary, the sister of Lazarus, and the other person being this sinful woman. Now, I studied this every which way but up. I went to every commentary I had. I called every theologian that I knew. I read every text that was on it. I read and studied and read and studied and read and studied for four hours to try to figure out whether it was two people or one person. And here is the best conclusion that I came to. The best conclusion I came to is two separate anointings all by one person whose name was Mary who was a sinful woman before she had an encounter with Jesus but then became became a disciple of Christ after she had an encounter with Jesus. And we're going to see in just a moment. She said, you know what? This anointing thing was so nice, I'm going to do it twice. 